Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video I'm going to focus on the Nexion display and a couple of commands within the display, the for and while loops. They're pretty similar in pretty much every device you use. I had a subscriber request this video and I want to do a video on each command for the Nexion display. But as I was making this, I ran into a little issue with the do events command. I've read about it. I never really used it. I thought I understood it, and I, I guess I really don't. But I'm going to use that in this video also. We're going to use a pretty simple setup for this. We've got two number fields and then just two plain buttons. And one set I'm going to use for the for loop, and the other set I'm going to use for the while loop. We won't do any coding on the number fields themselves. On the press release, we'll have the for loop. In the first part of the for loop, you set the value of the number field. And then in the second part, you compare it to something. And as long as it's not equal to that, or as long as that comparison is true, it will continue to execute the for loop. And the minute that it turns to be false, it will stop executing whatever's within these brackets. And then for the third part, you perform an operation on that uh, variable. The strange part is it doesn't have to be that variable. It can be anything, and we'll get into that towards the end. And for the for loop, we're just going to take the value that's in the number 0 field and write it into the button 0 field. The while loop works very similar. The for loop has the three commands. The while loop just breaks it up. So you assign the value outside the loop. Then you just do this comparison, and we're going to do the same comparison, so as long as that value is less than 500. And then you increment that, or do the operation within the loop itself. I'm going to run this in debug and I'll show you. It'll happen pretty fast because there's no delay. So I'm going to start with the for loop. And it counts to 500, and then you'll see this value stops at 499. Whereas on the while loop, it counts to 500, but then this value also goes to 500. That's because in the while loop, it continues to do it while that's happening. And so that increment to 500 happens within this portion of the loop. Whereas in the for statement, it happens up here. So with that final 500, it reaches it while it's doing its um, comparison up here and it exit prior to that. You could change this to be equal to 500 and we'll run that now. So now when I run it, but you'll see that it still goes to one above. So one of the main differences is the while will run until that value is, whereas the for loop doesn't is one short. And in order to see the count count up, I'm going to use this do events command because what it does is it refreshes the screen every time it hits that. And we're going to do that on both. So now you'll see it count. But one of the interesting things is if I start this one over here, I won't be able to start this one until this one is completed. And I had thought that maybe the do events would allow me to do that. You'll see that it starts after, but it doesn't. And I was hoping that it could start this one and then you could start this one because the do events, at least the way I thought it, it would continue to run operations in the background, but it doesn't appear to do that. It acts just the same as doing a delay. We'll do that next. So what I've done is I've commented out the do events. And I've added a delay of 10 milliseconds. I'm just guessing on that delay. And we'll do the same thing for the for loop. And you'll see they operate pretty much the same. I think it counts a little bit slower, but if I try and run the while, it won't let me. But now that I've clicked on it, it will run when this has reached 500. And as you can see, that's what happens. Now on this for loop, I said that at the end here, this has to be an operation. But this could be anything, really. So we're going to go ahead and copy this 
and we're going to put it down in here. Then we're going to change this to be n1 instead. So we're comparing n0, but we're counting n1 within this for loop, and then we're, we're doing the increment of n0. If we never did increment n0, this would never exit. It would just run forever, and you don't want that. But I just want to show you that you can um, kind of trick it in a way and have the n0 execute down in the code. And it counts, but you can see it's doing this one too because I have to have some operation in there. If you don't put anything in there, you'll get an error. But you can see in this case, it works out to be the same. So that's kind of a way to get around that being one off. And it kind of acts more like a while in this case. If you think about it, it is pretty much a while because you're assigning it first, it only assigns it once. And then you're doing your comparison, and then you're doing your, your count up down here. Whereas in the while, it's kind of the same thing. You're doing the increment down in the code itself. But this is where I kind of got a little sidetracked because I, I wanted to know about the do events because the other thing in the manual for the nection, the do events, supposedly also takes in data from the serial port. So it refreshes the screen so it'll show the count, but it'll also take information in from the serial port. So what I've done is I've created a little Arduino code that's just going to send every half a second, it's going to increment N1. I'm going to show you that real quick here. And this is just my standard code, and it's, it's my default setup, and I haven't changed anything except for in my asynchronous delay. And in my asynchronous delay down here, I'm serial 2 printing n1.val++, so I'm incrementing that box of val of n1. So in a way, we're not going to be using the, or the while loop, we're just going to be using the for. And up here, in my thing, my delay length, or in my variable delay length, I've set it to 500, so 500 milliseconds. So every half a second, we're going to send n1.val++ plus my n characters, which are the three FFs, out the serial port. And well, I also want to be able to press the button here and have it increment n1. So I'm going to change this. We'll make an increment. Then we're going to change the code on it. So we're essentially doing the same thing. When we press this button, it will increment this one, and we're sending the code from the Arduino. And I have a physical pin that I can unhook or connect to make that on or off. So now I'm going to reset this back to the do events. So as this is running, we'll see if this can increment. And as we've already seen, when we press this button, it shouldn't increment by this, but will it increment by pressing or by sending the values from the serial port? I need to clean this up first and put this back to the way it was, because I don't want N1 to, to increment. So now we're pretty much back to where we were. And now I'm going to run this in debug and show you that this button, how it works. So right now, before we hit the four button, we can hit this and it will increment. But once I hit this, now we can't increment that button. And I've, I'm clicking on it, and I'm getting nowhere. But at the end, I'm guessing it'll go up a one count. So now I'm going to upload this, and I'll put the camera on it. I have the display set up here, and you can see that the four and the increment. And if I press the increment, it increments. And I have this yellow wire, which is my transmit out of my Arduino Nano. I'm going to plug it into the next. And now you can see that it's counting up. And if I hit increment, it'll go faster. So either way, we can increment that display. And so I have that four button on there now. So it will start counting up when I press it. And since I have the do events running, I initially thought 
that it would continue to count. But I got a, I got a result that I didn't expect. And remember, if I hit this four button and then we click on that increment button, we only get one increment and it doesn't happen until the end. But you can see that it's at 135. And you can see that it's not incrementing every half a second. But see, it jumped up from 135 to 150 something, so about 20 seconds. So even though the the page isn't refreshing or the sh the display isn't isn't going, the commands that are coming in over the serial port are reaching the next gen display. I found that kind of interesting. Do it one more time here, and you can see it's at 190, and it should jump up to I'm guessing 211 or 211, 212, or 210. So that's probably how long it takes to count up. If I did the math, I could probably figure that out. Maybe the editor can do that for us. But I just found it pretty interesting that that, that do events happens that way. But is it the do events? We're going to go back and make one more change. In this four, I'm going to get rid of the do events and add in this delay. So it counts up at about the same rate. Since I'm not doing the do events, and while it's stuck in this loop, you can't do anything on the display, will the serial still come through? I'm going to change this to, and set it to INCR. Since we're making a coding change, and I won't be able to see it on the display, I want to make sure that I truly did, that the changes do go through. There, and you can see that we have the INCR, so I'm pretty sure that that code is up now. And now we'll switch it so it starts counting. And you can see that it's counting up. And now I'm going to hit the 4 button. And it froze just like it has in the past. And that does make sense because it's in that for loop. And it went up to 70. So you can see that it still gets those serial commands even though we're not running the do events. So to be honest with you, I'm really not sure what that do events does. You could also see that the count up showed even though the do events. And like I said, if you read the, anything out of it, the do events command is supposed to refresh the screen while you're executing a block of code or something like that. Even though that we are using the delay and it acts pretty much the same, According to the manual, the page refresh should be the, th the key to this do events, but you could see that it's refreshing as it goes. Now you might want to say that the cov covex command is causing that this button zero to change, but if you'll notice n0 also changes and we don't have the n0 change. I mean we're incrementing it here, but we're not actually specifying it to change. So as I said earlier, I'm not 100% sure what the do events function does other than have a little bit of a delay because I do believe that it refreshes the screen and it causes some sort of a small delay so you can see it happening because if we don't have either one of these in there it happens so fast that it just appears to just change instantly to 500 or 501. Well that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.